Hey everybody, welcome back to another replay cast. Final game in the grand finals of the third pack tournament. Of course, for the upteenth time, this tournament includes or is played with a mod that implements all the known upcoming changes coming with the South African DLC. And yeah, this is Greyhound vs. Boulanger game 3. Whoever wins this wins the uh, whole tournament. If it's a draw, the player with the most amount of conquest points in all those three games wins. I actually didn't pay attention to who had more through the first two games, so I'm sorry for that. But... Nah, there isn't a but. That's all. In any case, Boulanger's third and final deck. Eurocore. Now, this time around, so I'm not, you know, gonna make even more of a fool of myself than usual, I already took a look at what map is being played, and the map is Nuclear Winter is Coming. Which... It's one of the best maps for Eurocore, I'd say, uh, together with Punchbowl. Eurocore loves big maps because Eurocore is very fast, especially with the Tiger, has some very self-sufficient all-round check of all trades type of units. MX-10, of course, Legion 90, they, they, they thrive on these maps. Of course, both Tiger and the MX-10 got nerfed. You only get one piece right now. Planes, of course, also, or like especially the piece run itself, quite a strength of Eurocore. Air superiority against the most decks. Quite relatively easy to get. I wouldn't say quite easy, but you know, you, you, I would say you have the upper hand generally speaking because you have KWS with one of the most efficient ASFs per card in the game. So, um, yeah, all, all three of those units, which all three of them thrive on big maps as well, nerfed. That said, the Tiger Hab, for example, which is also very, very good, but you know, always in the shadow of the Recon Tiger, is still the exact same. Uh, Legion 90 are still the same. LRM is still the same, Crotal is still the same. Tank type MX-10 is still the same. You only get two Leclerc's, but a Nuclear Winter, I would say not a huge issue. That said, depending on what that ground plays, the seven CVs that Boulanger brings might not be enough. Generally speaking, a seven CVs for me, for ranked decks, is like the absolute minimum. I'd like to have eight at least, but seven, I generally never go below seven. Specifically, or mainly, because of Nuclear Winter's Coming. Nuclear Winter's Coming has a lot of zones, and a lot of them are two-pointers as well. If you end up playing against a deck or a player, or even both, who thrive, or like whose playstyle is around, or revolves a good bit around CV snipes, 7 CVs, or only having 7 CVs, might really come back to bite you. However, of course, players are free to adjust their decks before the game starts. They only have to declare which deck they are playing, but not the specific deck code. So if Boulanger felt that whatever deck Greyhound chose, it's not going to CV snipe a whole lot, then, you know, maybe that's the reason why he felt 7 CVs is more than enough. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, that might very well be the reason for that. Other than that, Relatively standard Eurocore deck. Uh, Boulanger not using reservists, unlike, for example, Crot in uh, recent games. Uh, Commander Marines and Panthers, I think I said it in Crot's, in the cast of Crot versus Boulanger, or Crot versus Blitzor, I don't remember as well. Personally, I've never really been a huge fan of it, but it's perfectly f uh, serviceable, especially on a map like uh, Nuclear Winter, where you can really make use out of Helo dropping. Um, down let it get hard. <laughs> Probably a mistake. You get 10 down with it, even in Eurocore it has no availability boost. So there's no real reason not to upfit them. Uh, Leopard 2 instead of 2A1. Most people prefer the 2A1, but I've seen in previous times as well. Bullanger making more use out of the base Leopard 2, so there you go. Of course, does lack those medium optics. Which uh, is its main hindrance, really. And yeah, still a card of MX-10, still a card of Tigers, of course. I don't know, yeah, not, nothing crazy, really. So let's take a look at the uh, Greyhound stack. Greyhound very surprisingly playing Eurocore. <laughs> Dutch German Coalition, sorry. Which is, for me, very surprising. Uh, Dutch German Coalition isn't really a fast deck. Like, sure, you have the Tiger. Escorts. And you have some decent wheeled infantry, specifically in the form of Core Marine 95, which are... One of my favorite um, special forces that, well, like, it's called normal special forces, you know, outside of the stuff that has, that have man pads and IT weapons, right? Outside of those, they might be my favorite or strongest. 
Uh, he does have Fighting Mega as well for some extra weird stuff, but I don't know. Again, no ATGM infantry, which I can understand because Milans aren't the best, but still, surprising. It did work out for him last time, but this time he has, doesn't have any Eric's. Uh, his maximum AT range is 700 meters. Eurocore doesn't, oh, like, sorry, Dutch Germany doesn't get anything above that outside of, you know, Milans, of course, as well as the Dragons. So there's gonna be some weaknesses there. Other than that, what is, it's really the, the, the infantry itself is generally speaking stronger. Sure, you lose Legion 90, but you have amazing Stoto Rip 95. You have Basically slightly better reservists than the French ones. You have Comer near 95. That is really the main strength, the grind game, the spam game. They like that. Amex 13s, the recon type ones, is also really, really good. Um, but you lose, again, that AT uh, power on the infantry. You lose the Crotal, the other Tigers. Of course, you get the Escort in return. Um, but generally, you're you're quite a slow deck, com especially compared to your core. So I'm a bit surprised at this choice of deck. Um, I would have expected him to either all split Eurocore, maybe Baltic front as well, who knows. That said, he actually uses the 4 HG motors, he doesn't use the 5 HG motors. Also surprising. Uh, up with that M109A5, which is essentially a Paladin, but with more range. Yeah, it's fine. Like, the, when it comes to artillery, that Germany isn't particularly strong. I know he doesn't like the Lars too. I myself am actually quite, quite fond of it, but to each their own. Other than that, yeah, nothing too crazy. So let's hop into the match. And like I said, nuclear winter is coming. So Greyhound starting on what in the past used to be considered the better side. This time, or nowadays, I'm really not sure. I'm quite undecided. It kind of also depends on like what decks are being played. Uh, especially if you know blue side is a slow deck, red side is a fast deck. Blue side can really get screwed by an alpha push. If blue side doesn't isn't good at town fighting, or rather, let me put it this way: if red side isn't good at town fighting, there's no real way they can go for delta push, right? Um, on the other hand, I would say that blue side also. If, if they got control of India, which is perfectly fine, it's incredibly hard to get back. Whereas red side, if they want to push Foxtrot, generally you very rarely see pushes happening beyond this, let's call it like this line here. And getting full control of Foxtrot is by no means impossible, but just very, very rare. And it only really happens if your opponent just mostly ignores all your stuff. Or you just go like all in on this side. Like overwhelm them like at least like 4 to 1 or something along those lines. Um, because there are no bridges that you can just very easily cut off. So reinforcing here is so much easier. Um, so yeah, I would generally say that blue side has the advantage on this part. And red side, let's say this part. And delta is just somewhat of a mystery to me. But generally, of course, blue part. Because, you know, they have much easier access to the town. and can stop getting into the town. But at the same time, red gets a lot more out of control of this town, right? If, they con if red controls this town... Blue has a, gonna have a very hard time to hold on to a foothold here, which means that in return red can get even more pressure onto alpha. So alpha is alpha and delta are generally very often the key for a red side win. I've I've always liked pushing Foxford as well, but these days you don't see that very often, especially with the prevalence of artillery, etc. So you can very easily just get murdered down here and just because you don't have a lot of uh, room to retreat, right? So your forces are always going to be like in this area, your main forces at least. And with LRMs, Zurich and Plummets, etc. being so common these days, it's very easy to flush you out over time. Um, but of course, what it can be is a temporary push, right? Similarly to a strategy on Mudfight that I like to use, you push here only for a while. It's of course a bit more expensive than a not fight, but what you might be able to do is push it for a while, maybe counter cap, ideally with a CV that you can relatively safely retreat if possible. Although again, it's a bit, uh, I wouldn't say complicated, but takes a bit of effort and time. Um, but you know, counter cap this for a while, and when you feel like your opponent has really invested a whole lot to get you rid of there, then you pull back your the stuff that is fast. You know, leave some infantry or whatever behind it. You can't retreat. Um, 
just defend India and all the meanwhile while your opponent is busy investing into Foxtrot, you, you pump points into this side. So that might be a strategy that I actually haven't really tried yet. But anyway, let's see how this goes. Hard to see what blue side does because it's always stuff placed here. Although, it seems like he wants to do a drop over in that end. There used to be a gap on this side, but Greyhound decided otherwise. If I win, I quit. If not, fuck me. All right. All right. K two K W. Okay, that's expensive. Two hundred eighty points worth of ASFs immediately coming out for Greyhound. Really wants to stop that um, Hito drop, which can ver can very much work out. The KWSs aren't too bad against a a helicopters. Nine hundred kmh instead of one thousand is an advantage here because that means they're less likely to just overshoot the target and get still get two aim nines off. Vulcan, of course, deals very a lot of damage as well to helicopters. So there is that. So, so Boulanger two Legion ninety. It makes sense, I, th I believe, right? He has Legion ninety. Yeah, those should be only an infantry type infantry in there. Two Legion ninety uh, squads, an MX and RCSP, and a Panther. Panther, I presume, is gonna try to land here. Given its trajectory, does not look like he wants to unload there or there. Might be, you know, trying to unload here as well if he sees something like the KWS, but we will see. Tiger, two tigers to, you know, wreck any helicopters there, and the Panther to presumably land in here, maybe even more aggressive than Charlie somewhere. Given its trajectory, it. Uh... See, it flies like this. Yeah, let's go somewhere here. Um, Milan squad and the uh, commandos para, another commandos para, fairly light here. I'm not sure if he has something in the back pocket in terms of points, but I mean those helicopters do be expensive, right? That's 65 points, another 65 points, is already 130 points. These two, that's 200, 240, so it's already 370 points in just these four units. Um, on the on the other hand, we have Freyhound starting with two CVs, which means that ground wise, yes. MX-13s, a Gephardt, which is surprising that he would still start with the Gephardt, even though he has two ASFs. Three stop to rip 95, upverted. 590, KCT, everything upverted, by the way. I mean, infantry tab, upverting everything if you have five cards for rifle infantry, especially, essentially. I guess it's reasonable. And of course, a CV. Stop to rip 95, once in the YPR, once in the five-pointer, going for India. Hold up, when do they get up? They should spot the tigers a bit later. Oh, they're already spotted, never mind. Boulanger, of course, spots the KWSs as well. Boulanger has no ground base AA, by the way, contrary to Greyhound. Delays those tigers. I assume he didn't want to dive them initially because of, you know, that doesn't want to lose them to ground based AA. There's the Crotal. Panther also now landing here. Yeah, no, it's still trying to go for this. I guess uh, Graham didn't spot this. Which can really massively delay uh, Greyhound's efforts on this end. That's the main issue. That's actually the main issue of um, stuff landing there, right? It's not necessarily that they just you know, make it impossible for you to attack, but they delay you very much, uh, very often so much and cost you so many points to get rid of. These throw through them and load, hopefully they get into a bush, otherwise the MXN is able to catch them out in the open. Another Gabbard coming in, Jesus. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense because Greyhound didn't deal with the Tigers. Even still though, I'm surprised by it. Why well, Perica 2 a one coming in here, wow. He's quite defensive, I guess he doesn't really know where Bullinger is pushing, but that's the issue when you have like no fast recon. Literally, the only recon ground you can have is these two MX-13s and a KCT in the Transport, MX-10, but missed. KWS has tried to gun run. It's a bit unfortunate, but they were worried, and of course only a 50% base accuracy. And 3 unloading here as well. UH-14 coming to scout ahead a bit, wasting some ammo, got rid of all of the Mistrals. Tiger weapons turned off, ground weapons at this. F-104G also being bought here for the Panther. He's investing quite a lot into those planes. Maybe he's too, Maybe he doesn't want to allow um, Boulanger to gain air, uh, air superiority because he feels that 
in the long run, his ground-based game is stronger, and as such, he doesn't want to get just obliterated by like peace rents and and the like. He makes thirteen get saved into the bush here. Panther is still landed. Yep. But the Crotal is coming here as well. Legion ninety have been moved up. Commander Marines. What? Did he tell them to fire position? He must have. I guess what he maybe tried to do is... Oh, I, I, I think what he tried to do is fire position. See if they return the fire, right? Have line of sight and range on the Commander Marines. Nothing fired back. So, Boulanger felt, alright, it's safe to move up here because the Soldier is still too far behind or either there's nothing there. I'm not sure if you really spot them. Not 100% certain. Didn't pay attention. But I think that seems to be what Boulanger did there. Either that or he just misclicked and accidentally told them to fire position instead of move out. <laughs> either it was really galaxy brain or it was really smooth brain. I think there's nothing in between. <laughs> but if, if it was the galaxy brain play, that, again, truly galaxy brain. Very, very smart. Okay, we just coming in to dive those Legion 9 and yeah, the, those Vulcans can do so much work, but if he gets unlucky, should only get this another missile off. Hits once, not a huge deal, annoying of course, but not huge, because he basically always has this other Kadeoglis ready if necessary. Still though, I'm pretty sure, that, yeah, those Command Marines definitely gonna win. Uh, the Sotter may be up with it, but they're still just Shock versus Marines, and of course, uh, Elite, excuse me, and of course they are 15 men on top of that. Ground just slowly feeling around, pushing around, where can he go? Boulanger very, very light, but of course has those helicopters to back him up. And um, Ground's forces mainly consisting of infantry. One, uh, excuse me, one wrong step and those rocket bots will just demolish them. Another critter coming in. Surprise he doesn't bring out Rodents or something, uh, because it's very, very unlikely. I would say at least, for that Germany to run any seat. Tiger up has been rearmed. Tiger is still just chilling here, very passive. I'm not sure if he just doesn't feel like there's a need for it, or rather, while well, he doesn't have a need for it, he just wants it to make sure there's nothing sneaking here. But I feel like you get, could get some nice stuff going on around like this side. But then again, on the other hand, you really don't want it to be too close to the air spawn, then it just gets dived, especially across um, waters where you can't really land. So this area might be best, but then again, on the other hand, with all these bushes, it's very easy to just suddenly get, just, sorry, suddenly get caught out by AA. So what I would probably do, I guess he's moving it, but maybe positioned here, so you can easily spot stuff driving down here, and still be far enough away from the air spawn, so you have enough time to react in case there's something trying to dive your helicopter. Now the Tiger Rab is strongly reinforced here with its fire support. There is a gap right in the back. Recon moving up. M13 coming out as well. No player really sneaking around outside of those KCT. Blanger does have some defense here. It's a lot easier for red side to sneak around behind the second spawn than it is for blue side. Then again, I definitely feel that blue side has a easier time trying to get something sneaky sneaky going here. Those are Commando Marines. Sorry, Core Marineers. Man, those names. Neither player has kept a two pointer yet, which is kind of surprising. But I guess neither player wants to like give up the momentum unless they have to. With unless they have to, I obviously mean um unless the opponent suddenly camps a two pointer. Then they probably feel obligated to do the same. Two run threes coming in. Greyhound very, very heavily investing into planes. Boulanger very heavily investing into AA. Makes sense. Greyhound already has two KWSs ready. So getting air superiority is gonna get tough. So just buy AA instead. Being turned off. Uh, good habit. But of course not necessary. But he obviously has no way of knowing. That said, if I'm playing against a deck where I think it's unlikely they run seed, that being the German Coalition, I'd probably leave them on. But on the other hand, this is the finals, this is the last game. Whoever wins this wins the grand finals, so he probably also at the same time doesn't want to um, take any chances as well. On the other hand though, if you're currently busy migrating on the other side and you notice too late there's a plane near your AA, you might be too late for turning it on. It all depends on your skills on radar migrating as well. Which I wouldn't be surprised if Boulanger is very good at, but I never really paid too much attention to that. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if he's quite good at it.
Oh, with Milan 3 here coming in, th that's really, really scary. That's gonna make uh, defending against those helicopters tough, because if they snub you, uh, Gephardt, it's gonna be a bit tough in those uh, two Crotons. And don't forget those Tigers. Um, might be just completely deny your Helo Divers. Might be able to just completely deny your Helo Divers. Sorry. The FT20 making use of its amphibious capability. If it gets so close to the Fox Fibu, or uh, relatively close at all, definitely will be able to kill that. And there's nothing really that is able to spot those, unless the Fufu itself. So, at the moment, it's gonna be tough for Bula uh, Greyhound to notice that. I went for the G coming in. Gets hit once by the Crotal. Panther lands fast enough. Still flies onwards, right decision. You don't want to immediately evac because then it might evac this direction. So fly, fly past the AA and then evac. Smart. Cormania will win against the Commando Marines, especially because they're low, low in HP, but now there's a Panther coming in again. So what do you do? <laughs> there's a Median of 3 as well. KWSS, I can only repeat myself from previous times. I'm not a fan of having both ASFs circling at the same time. Fire Chimigan 90, dueling those Commander Marines. I guess it's not really a duel if it's 2v1, is it? And no real tank, but a 2 point CV4 Greyhound, so it's ticking plus 2. Web T20 is still moving in, nothing coming out. It's also actually kind of tough to see this coming in, because typically if you buy something here, it's, it's gonna drive this way. And if you want something on this end, you, you spawn from here, so very rarely have you uh, units driving in this direction or in that direction that would actually spot this. But if the 4 pick gets captured, that, yep, that notifies ground. Let's see. Nothing being bought just yet. The M109 is being moved. Okay, Bulanger gives the fire. <laughs> Bulanger gives the fire position command to shoot at the fob and kill the fob, but it was just only one burst. So, or yeah, you have to give like shift fire position commands. Tiger being bought immediately. CV being moved. Magic Man ninety didn't actually manage to kill them. They managed to retreat in time. But I think both players at the moment are a bit busy with what's, hap what's happening down here. Bulanja giving the fire position commands, which is why I think they're not moving and they're not unloading. Greyhound being busy killing whatever is with the tiger. And that forced 140 point investment. Sure, I'm not saying like 140 points gone for nothing, but it's maybe not necessarily what we want now. We want pushing up, trying to get the MX-10, but that retreats in time. And now those Dolter are gone. Tiger forgot to turn off its hot tool, so it didn't get a chance to get that off. Tiger kills the web. Um, Fix FIFA coming out for Ulanger as well. MX30 MX is coming in with three servers, as well as Dotrippen. Let me consider moving up those uh, MX13s into one of these bushes here. They give cover as well. That's a bit too close, maybe, but this one would potentially give a, a given line of sight onto this part of the zone. Tiger finishing off the Leopard because there was no AA to protect. Is able to land just in time, right next to the bush it was hovering above. Get KWS gets hit once by like a, like a sideline, negative crit, whatever you want to call it. Only took 3 damage as opposed to either 5 again of this or 6 of the Grotal. I think it was a Grotal missile though that hit it there. Gavard actually moved up here, but Quagwa gets killed by the Milan. Very unfortunate. Kills the panther. That's not really worth it. There's this tiger here now, but the tiger is not really gonna stand a chance or like have any chance to get rid of those helicopters because it's the crotals protecting, of course. Not to mention that the tiger hap outranges it as well. But there's further fights coming up here. And Yuruko are generally not particularly good to do with like strong infantry in forests like this. They have the LRM to help, but if that's not around. You, oh, KCT snipes an incoming Legion 90 that you, you'd love to see for Greyhound. And you had to see it for Boulanger, who immediately notices, which is good, buys <laughs> three Kasai IPs. Understandable. Because having something in the back of your spawn is just so frustrating. We saw it happening in Blanching Valley as well. But here we go. That's one of the prime ways for you to deal with, with stuff like this Rocket Pots. And. One of the fastest ways to do with any to do with any infantry. Now this is the exact thing that I mentioned. Now 
Wooden Jay is moving up here. He doesn't have any proper tanks just yet, but Greyhound doesn't really know that either. So, reinforcing India or getting back into India is gonna be tough at the moment. Possible, it's just one infantry squad, one nearly dead squad, and an AMX 10 in terms of ground units. But Greyhound doesn't quite know that yet. He could just essentially fast move in there, I think. The MX2, two MX-13s should be able to do win against the MX-10. He just makes, makes needs to make sure that um, they are actually in range. But of course he doesn't know what exactly is there. Is there one Legion 90 squad? Is there two or three? What are the reinforcements? He has no line of sight on the reinforcements here. And all those other women up there got killed as well. And of course the Falchip Mega 90 as we saw. That said, Greyhound still has like ample of you know, opportunity to attack, and the position that Red Spawn has up here in very many games gives allows you to attack fairly easily, let's put it that way. Um, but the longer it takes, of course, the longer Bullanger has to prepare, build up defenses. Three Star Trip 95 still in here. I think at this point, definitely should reduce this to one and move two others up. Maybe even try to do something down here. There's not really much stopping them. One VAP. But he should be able to break line of sight. Still down. AMXN got dealt with. Oopsie. It's that thing again. Leech Knight down to 4 HP. So ground is slowly su kind of coming back. Still it's gonna be tough though. <laughs> oh my god. AWS going a bit too deep here. Eventually we're gonna get burned here. Not just the oh, yep. You can't escape those forever. They might like the range of Rolands and even to a certain extent the accuracy, you know, sixty versus sixty-five. But they're still very, very deadly to planes, and um, oh, they only have one armor, so they do take significant damage from the Vulcan. Evac Bingo doesn't quite get burned this time. Kurtal here was turned off. Oh, he does get burned by the Tiger, yep. That's why you don't want to risk your planes like that against the AAs. Ooh. Oh, wow, that snipe. If that Kurtal had been turned on, it might have lost another plane just there. So Greyhound throwing away his planes. I guess he's kind of desperate and felt like, do I have any chance chance of like winning? He like has to gamble here, because what I assume he maybe may have tried to do is, for one, find out the position of the AA, see if he can maybe even empty it if possible, or check if, if they are empty already, so he can move in with the Tiger, which is what he's doing now. So I can understand where he's coming from, and I'm not saying what he did is just absolute, absolute you know, garbage or anything, but um, from a certain point of view it makes sense, and here you can see Tiger kills von Kotal. We see a plane coming in, not yet, there's a Tiger Hub of course, but Greyhound is a bit too careful, so he can't really make a whole lot more use out of that, because now there's a Kasai, becoming, Kasai is coming, which he could kill with the uh, Stingers, of course. But now there's also the uh, Tiger Hab, so this Crusade is gonna survive, and this Tiger. This Tiger being landed, I very much assume had no line of sight to this Tiger, because the Force was in the way. So kind of like on that end, and there's a Peace Run coming in. For one KWS is dead, the other one damaged, so chances are unlikely there's an ASF coming to stop this. Speaking of, there it is, actually. Oh, Tiger didn't land quite in time, so the aim line did come off. But it gets killed in return. Not an amazing trade, but it means there's only one peace run left. On the other hand, I don't think peace runs are really the main issue the Greyhound currently faces. Who is still pushing up here? Or like at least probing with those aim axes. That's the Tiger Hab. And there's two bows that kill the Kasaipi. But the Tiger Up is just chilling in the back here for now. As the Legion 90 get killed by those Natres and the other Natres and the AMXs, I presume. M109 down to 5 rounds. Definitely should drive up to the farm. And, oh, there is actually an LRM. Could definitely try to use, use this to kill the farm. But I think um, not really a huge priority, I reckon. The M109, I presume, is not really a big issue for Boulanger. And um, the Tiger is already dead, so... Sure, he got caught by another one, but there's all, they're also one of the main benef benefactors from a fob. Komarnir took a lot of damage from moving out through the open, but a really 
got them down to one HP very quickly as well. And actually Greyhound getting back into India, surprisingly enough. I have to say I didn't quite believe it. Of course he doesn't have full control just yet. Should those million are moving back and technically there's no Boulanger unit in there. But it doesn't mean Boulanger has no control over any of these parts, right? Those tigers are still very much flying around. Giving him five position command, trying to finish them off. Doesn't work. I had to mute myself there because I had to sneeze and nope, no, 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 uh, no additional sneeze coming in. MS-13, not 100% certain what I killed, I presume the second Grotal, because I don't see it around anymore. The Stortrippen are moving up now, like I said. Honestly, I felt like the better, I mean, oh, he, he doesn't know, of course, he doesn't really know what's in these bushes. From the birds, uh, all knowing birds I view, the best choice would have been smoke these off. Then Boulanger doesn't know what he's smoking off, and then he can move them up, and probably doesn't even know that they're moving up. But now that he's smoking this off, he obviously signals that these total are moving up. But of course, Greyhound doesn't know that there's only basically only these guys are having line of sight. The web kind of does as well, but like I said, he could probably get good stealth versus poor optics, probably wouldn't even spot it. But at the moment, Boulanger not really doing anything against it. Coming in with the Leopard 2 and some Legion 90, there's a Tanks be coming in. I would definitely see, like to see some more anti-tank stuff coming in for Greyhound. Um, sure, there's only Leopard 2, but it's not just about the gun, but also about the armor. So there's some kind of wall that he, that his bullet chair can't just get rid of with rocket pods or auto cannons of, on helicopters. In the meantime, Greyhound is still pushing him. Wilder 2 coming in on this end. If those sort of should have no issue winning this town. Tiger, still very much alive. Roland 3 is uh, moving around. But I think what Ground probably should do now, capture this and now just keeps like pumping out points here but not really properly pushing, just keep Boulanger busy. Ground is heading Congress points, will probably not have a plus two for long. I, I reckon that Boulanger will probably buy a CV for Elf fairly soon. But I think the ideal choice for Ground to do is just keep Boulanger busy. Ideally, keep him busy in Alpha, because Alpha the engagement is happening in this area. So if he loses units pushing there, he still has like this wall there and this down there to defend, and doesn't immediately open up um, an avenue for Boulanger to counter push into his own two-pointer. So if you can just keep him busy here, keep Boulanger to just skirmish around this area, then he just can keep a Congress point status quo and win. But of course, easier said than done. There's a CV coming in. Greyhound is still taking plus two for a while, halfway gone. But getting back points, Nuclear Winter is probably the map where getting back a Congress point lead is the easiest because of all these two pointers, right? If at some point, eventually your opponent cracks and everything falls apart, stuff falls apart very quickly. Like suddenly you can go from like a minus one to a plus five tick or something. So that's why, you know, unless you're in destruction points, right, completely rolling your, over your opponent, it doesn't really, it doesn't really say anything just yet. But of course, it does mean it says nothing. It's just less relevant than on other maps. At least ever since Tropic Thunder is out of the ranked map pool. LRM coming in again, firing. Should maybe consider getting another one, you know, halfway gone through and the Fobster is plenty left. But then again, he doesn't didn't have it from the start. So, yeah, that's the issue for positioning here. Very easy LRM target. But that's also why you maybe should consider getting control of, over this forest, because then you can start packing uh, parking stuff in here as well. And if you know you have control over this, then stuff on here is very safe, and it's such a huge forest, hard to really determine. Here, Grand has to be careful, you know, rocket pots, etc. And what he, yeah, exactly. He should definitely retreat it into the town, deeper into the town. So those rocket pots are gonna have much, much harder time to fire, as well as those Mario 2s, of course. So he should probably just allow this infantry to come in because infantry versus infantry ground has a much, much, much better deck. Panzer grants are good, yes. Legion 90 are good, yes, against infantry, but they're both more expensive against Sot uh, versus uh, than Sot 95. For one base, but secondly also with the transports that either players have. But also those Sotrop are upvetted too. 
Hunters are being pushed up here, not sure if I like that. Again, there's no... Okay, there's a 2-1 now, but... Not, not really much for Boulanger to pull, push with, but it's definitely prepared to... You know, continue pushing. Yes, those roll on threes here now. I don't know, I'm trying to counter better the LRM. Or maybe just felt like, I guess I might as well fire in there because that's probably the fob too. Which, you know, if that's his thought process, very much could work. Jupiter coming in to repair those combat in U95. Of course, big bonus of 15 HP uh, in infantry. They're more expensive, yes, but you're much more likely to be able to preserve them and then repair them. But, you know, despite the LRM stuff is here pretty happy, stuff here is pretty happy, and not really much for Boulanger to counter push here at the moment, but again, more murder tools coming in. Reserve is coming in as well here, MX-13s should probably be like in here where they can actually make use of their range a bit. You don't want to force fight with them because they just get wrecked by infantry and auto cannons alike. Plane coming in, Jaguar and KWS. Ever turned off. As you can see, it's moving, so spotted relatively early. That's the problem with the Jaguar, it has no stealth. As Amex PRIs or Amex 13s, techni technically. Um, no, not Amex. No, they are Amex 13s, right? That's the same chassis as the Amex 13 tank thing. And in the French, yeah, the Amex 13 BTT, that's the. Oh, the upper two one gets spotted. Does get two shot by the 25 AP. Oh, no, no. Lost line of sight, barely. Where's the smoke? Where's the smoke? M109 might aim to, for smoking here. But uh, given the how long it takes, probably not. Oh, it re-aims now, alright. And there's the push slowly coming. LRM to soften stuff up. 2-1 is damaged, of course. KWS versus KWS, who wins the lottery? Both players. Because the Rollins were too far away to have any significant impact. And the Dragger behind to finish off the Gepard. That's dangerous. Very dangerous. That's the danger of having only one AAPs around. If it gets killed, helicopters might just roll you over. Uh, this came in actually to kill the low, low hovering Tigers. But not accurate enough. Or not properly positioned. AMX-13 trying to kill this infantry. But it may be a bit too much for that low, low AMX-13. That again, if he may, I mean, uh, the, excuse me, man has to kill just his infantry, sometimes that's just enough. Sometimes all you have to do is deal with what supports the tanks rather than the tanks themselves. But Tiger here, another Tiger coming in. Boulanger knows there's most likely no or very little AA. So that's easy prey for him. Meanwhile, Sotrop came up a bit, bit too far, so those Marta Tools and Gasipes open fire, but not strong enough to stop them from murdering those Panzer out in the open. And that Leopard 2 is hunting stuff. It wants that CV, but if it's a bit too reckless, the tank CV might actually win. Or the 2A1 here might side rot. And don't forget, base Leopard 2, 5 side armor only. That's not a lot. But on attack move fast enough. Tiger now, though, helping out. But the Tiger Hap in return. Trading? Nope. Killing the Regan Tiger without getting a kill in return. Bo refusing to aim fast enough, also getting killed. That's frustrating. Very frustrating. At the, for the, at the moment, it was the only thing that had any chance of stopping those Tigers, and there's now three of them. And Panther. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why in Landjut, and even in Dutch German Coalition as well, but I don't play this deck as much as Landjut, I like to run man pads. Because if all your AA is like 50 plus points, then yes, of course, they're fine against helicopters, but preferably, for me at least, I like to have like a main AA piece like a Gephardt and something to fall back on. And that something is man pads because they're cheap, they're easy to keep alive, they're stealthy, but he doesn't have them. That might be his downfall here. I think a man pet squad being able to put into the tower here or in a bush there could have re re I mean hindsight is twenty twenty of course, but especially on a map like this, that is relatively open, relatively big, it's tough to have enough AA across your front line to be able to deal with multiple helicopters. Not just single ones, but multiple ones. Which means that very often you have to spread your AA around, and very often you 
a certain part of the front line may just only be covered by one AA piece. Now maybe you're saying, well, he's playing against your core, you should have seen this coming, you should have prepared. Yes, but also no, your core doesn't always just roll around like having so many tigers. Yes, the tiger is very strong and these days is a key part of your core, but it has been nerfed here. And your core still has a, a, a reasonably strong ground game as well. So you can't always bank on that happening. It's not like you're playing against an airborne deck where you know, well, they have to buy helicopters essentially, right? So that's, that's on these big maps can be for certain decks an issue when dealing with helicopters. That said, at the moment, Greyhound is still taking bus one with only 30 minutes to go. Seems like he may be able to keep this alive for a bit at least, but there's no ground-based reinforcement coming in at the moment. And I don't think anything is gonna stop this stuff from killing the CV. And in return, there's an infantry CV that got unloaded. Gephardt got sniped again. He has to reinforce over the open across the bridge. It's very easy to just see that stuff and then just snipe it, get rid of it. Greyhound, obviously threatened, now tries to counter push back into Alpha because he knows I'm gonna lose this two-pointer. And yep, he is. So what Greyhound probably is doing now. This may be his last stitch effort, but yeah, you can see this coming in here. Now his priority is, all right, get one or two squads just to stop anything from driving over the bridge so I don't lose my base. And now just invest up here. You can see this. AMX to, uh, nine AMX is six for service, three stop to open. He's under pressure, plus three soon. Uh, 15 ticks per minute. So 10 minutes is 150 ticks. So 180 ticks in 12 minutes. 180 times three is 540. That's easily 500 points. So Greyhound has to be fast. Bulan share? Is he gonna cancel that? I wonder. Doesn't look like it. Sp nope, he's not. Spare CV coming in. Maybe he suspects he's gonna lose it to the M109. Not sure. Or maybe, I don't know. We'll see. Spare CV anyway. And um, yep, now he knows it, or like now he re realizes, oh shit, I have to defend my stuff here. Because there's not a whole lot of stuff. There's a commander spider here, and that's it. I guess there's a Kasai P. Uh, the Panther as well, so. Don't arrest me, just a bit, a few helicopters, of course, as you've seen down here. But here's the other strength of like helicopter focus stuff. He can reroute these so quickly, right? They're obviously so fast, he can very easily just maneuver them around the map, help on the other front line. And, oh, yep, Grand knows where his CV is. But even if he kills it, again, there's a spare CV. Which he might, uh, probably doesn't spot those. Commander Marines definitely spot that AMX 13 out in the open. Grand has to be fast though. Why the Gavard here? Does want to lose this to a to a tiger, of course. A109 does kill CV. Sure, it doesn't stop Boulanger from the plus three, but at least it gives him a small break, but not a big one because Boulanger saw it coming already. 3-1, is he getting dealt with? Uh, nope, not dealing with the Leopard 2 because it reverses in time. LRM slows the stuff here down, allowing the Panther to come in. Allowing the... No, Tiger is still only just now moving. And yeah, you hate you hate to be in the position like this. Now it's very obvious where you're gonna push from. And that's where the LRM is, or like, stuff like LRM is so, so strong. With this fast aim time and just huge area of effect, if it's obvious where you're gonna push from, LRM, Jurgen, Plumman, etc. Uh, how can I have such an easy time to just shut you down? Personally speaking, that's what I hate about them the most. I don't mind them being able to like soften up stuff that is in a bunker down position or something. What I don't like about them, or what I think is too strong in my eyes, is the fact that they're so good defensively, right? They just stop you from pushing up further. And um, yeah, everything here is panicked. Sure, each night you still miss, but. Yeah, Grant's gonna have a hard time. So he has to essentially attack from multiple sides, but that again is kind of weak against all these helicopters because it means you have a much bigger area to defend against uh, from defend from helicopters. So it's like damned if you do, damned if you don't in these situations. If you do a centralized push, which is better against like helicopters because you have an easier time covering them, LRM is gonna wreck you. If you push from multiple sides, and the helicopters will wreck you. <laughs> it's Another situation that I like being in, and I've been in quite a lot. And yeah, like I said, getting back into India, once you once your opponent has a reasonably fortified position, just virtually impossible. 
Coming in, unloading fast enough because the commander's powder actually missed the first shot. Still they kill the Fuchs, which means they panic the Fudgemaker, so they, they're slowed down, takes up morale damage, and actually get significantly wrecked by those commander's powder, which m might still lose in CQC, but that's th some significant damage nonetheless. But uh, I think at this point, we all know how this ends. It has to be said though, this was a very good last match because I, I would say in the early game it felt like Greyhound was behind, then Greyhound seemed to have the upper hand, but then Vulinja actually managed to break through in India. Um, sniping the AA piece or pieces was so crucial, allowed his Tigers, his helicopters to do so much work. Leopard 2 gets killed by... Yeah, Buanjir moves ahead now any second, and there's a peace run coming in. And that is GG. That is essentially GG, because even if Ground has, like, if there were more time, i.e. Buanjir wouldn't have to tick and then one more time left, Ground might be able to contest, but that's the point, right? That's why there's a 500 point conquest, time, uh, conquest point limit, that's why the 40, point, uh, 40 minute time limit. Um, I think the KD doesn't really show really how the game went. I think most of them, the ma majority of kills from Wulanger, or like the disparity, I, I should say, came from like once that breakthrough happened, when it fell apart for Greyhound. Forced him to protect his Leopard 2 CV in mid as well with the like Gephardt, etc. So, yeah. Well played for Boulanger, from Boulanger. Well played for Greyhound as well, especially the second match as well. But the third match, I think, was definitely the closest, even again, if it doesn't look like it at the end. Um... Yeah. Good matches all around. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the casts. Congrats to Boulanger, of course. And hopefully soon there will be South Africa content. But in any case, hope you enjoyed it. And I'll hopefully see you next time. Later.